Okay, why don't you start? Okay. Well, we'll just rep that, and if we have to redo it. Yeah, we're good at that. We do that a little bit. Hey everyone, Matt Lanther here with Primary and Secondary. Welcome to Ballistic Testing with Primary and Secondary. Here joined by Nate and Rhett. We're gonna be shooting a bunch of pieces of gel with random guns to see what happens for science. Yeah, and I think uh, as, as Matt discussed earlier, we are going to use a known quantity um, caliber and ammunition type, in this case the 147 grain Federal HST, which has a long track record, yeah. very consistent testing. It's going to allow control. us to establish a baseline yeah. in a short barrel and a more, let's say, service pistol barrel length. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Rhett, I know that you've done some gel testing. It's a first for us. It's interesting to see everything that we have to do with this. Sure, there is a process to it. Consistency is key. Yeah. Uh, you've got to have the same approach with everything. So, uh, you know, knowing your variables and limiting them as much as possible, that's the name of the game here. And, well, if you do it right, then these results should be comparable to what other people are doing as well. This yeah. is where you can kind of put apples and oranges next to each other and see how they're different. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we aren't using this, the, the FBI ordnance gel. We are using clear, clear gel, and we recognize that, and that's why we are starting off with this 9mm as the control. Yep, and also, like you mentioned, we were, we were talking earlier, how many rounds are we going to fire per, you know, per ammunition type? And, you know, we started off, you know, maybe we fire one or two, um, and as Rhett was mentioning, this, this idea of consistency, having a little bit larger end data set to deal with, so we're, we're going to default to five individual shots of any ammunition type that we want to test. And that's going to allow us to account for any bullets that are going to be exiting the gel, um, any bullets that hit another bullet that's in the gel, um, different behavior of the bullet. So we've talked about, for example, a double-ended wad cutter, uh, something like that that's not necessarily designed to expand. Um, what's going to happen when it spins around versus, versus going directly through? Um, hopefully we'll be able to capture all of those different variables within the five round data set. Yeah. A lot of the stuff we do, there's some kind of, it's kind of cool G-Wiz factor. Stuff that personally, I don't know about you guys, I want to see this for myself. This is why a lot of these guns that we've been testing over the weekend, it's better to see it in our hands, to see it perform as opposed to just trust things off the interwebs. So we're providing our own data sets. Hopefully it's gonna be helpful for you. Hopefully this is gonna provide some information. Some of the things to consider during this though is uh, the, the caliber, the, the type of round you're using, the brand of ammunition you're using, the firearm you're using. Uh, I believe tomorrow we'll probably do a video on uh, differences between two different shotguns that are exactly the same and how, this, how the patterns are gonna be different. There are a lot of factors here and just because we might get a, we might get some kind of a result out of these tests doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the thing that you see if you do the same thing. What this is is this this is providing some data points and they aren't necessarily universal and they aren't necessarily going to be um, universally co uh, consistent with everything you see. So like with everything, cater it all to your mission and uh, test all test out and prove your gear. You guys have anything else? Well, I was just going to say one of the most exciting parts of this test for me personally is going to be the 32 caliber yes. uh, revolver ammunition. Yeah. It's going to be our largest data set, so I was able to get a hold of some 32 Smith & Wesson short ammunition. I'm ready to go from that all the way through a spectrum um, to the full power 327 Federal Magnum from Buffalo Bore and uh, with the gold dot loading. Yeah. So, you know, what is the, what is the relationship between expansion, penetration depth, uh, controllability of the gun um, and things like that and I think because that is one of the largest data sets I think we should start with that as just a short introduction um, we're going to be using the LCR uh, two-inch barrel 
and as a, as a little bit of an introduction into the ballistic testing, we've got two rounds of MagTech, uh, fairly soft lead, uh, full wad cutters with a hollow base, and uh, let's see what those do in the gel right now. Yeah. And 32, uh, I'm excited about this. It is a really cool round, really hot right now, and it's cool to see what it's going to do. Okay, we're going hot. That is yours. Okay, do you want to say anything? Hi. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm just gonna do it all on the phone. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, job testing is too tedious to try and say it a million times. I just enjoy sitting. Oh, you, you just pulled on it. Pause, pause. Oh, I jump every time. Gotta go down range. Down range! I'm gonna go with the phone. I thought these guys have to jump too. Did you see the projector? Oh, exactly. awesome. This one. That's awesome. So. That's cool. Oh, look at that. That's my that's HST, pretty. right? That's your ammo through the uh, 365. So that's the rigorously like, over penetrating. I, like, I looked at that shot and I heard you guys like, what do you want from me? <laughs> There's nothing. That is very pretty. So, so everyone's on the like same page. Magazine. Gel testing is not showing us what that the performance the is. This, what you're seeing, this cavity, doesn't mean shit. No, it means some shit, but as far as this is concerned, what we're doing is we're measuring penetration depth and the end state of the round. So based on this, clearly, how, so how far? How 16 inches of penetration without enough energy to even it. clear the concrete behind it. Uh, I don't know, it they moved got, it around. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let's wrap it up. Let's make sure it stays. Yeah, we, I mean, we shifted this. Oh, so, so what was your question? One inch at a time. So oh. Video, so. oh, yeah, so, so <laughs> yeah, pay no, uh, so like when you see these gel tests on YouTube, no, like, like, you see, yeah, uh, that's, that's, we aren't made, we aren't one, what, analogous? No, what's the word? Analogous? Yeah, we're not one specific type of thing. We have or oh, yes, we're not yes, the human single. body is not a homogeneous. That's mass the word tissue. homogeneous. Um, so with that in mind, yeah, this looks cool, but ultimately what matters is we entered here, we exited here. That's what the bullet looks like. FBI calibrated gel test says optimal penetration is between 12 and 18 inches in their calibrated gel. That doesn't mean it's 12 to 18 inches a person. That's of their gel. Because there's plenty of data on those yes. stopping in the t-shirt on the back of bad guys. Yeah. Which? And this is normal. Really? I was just curious. Yeah. With that wound channel. It definitely so would have stopped in a t-shirt on the back of that. Which, by the way, you should probably just... Uh, yeah. Because also, all this is doing is this is showing the natural elasticity of flesh. Yeah. So if you got shot, yeah. there's a good possibility of seeing yeah. shots. Yeah, okay. they close back up. Okay. You might even put some weight in it. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Like, uh, like, like Matt's Chambers Custom 1911. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that box is going to get shot through, but it'll catch the ones that are just pooping out the back. That's what she said. Science, like everyone, do. science. That's the one. Oh, shit. Okay, we're going hot. Eyes and ears. I'm going to take two oh, shots. Thanks, Matt. So that was one, what was the grainage on that? 147, 147 standard. 147 standard HST. Okay, I'm just gonna take one shot at the steel. I'll kneel down after okay. that. You should you should say 147 HST out Through of this, this gun. gun. Yeah. So that in editing it's easier because Easy. you'll get them mixed up when you start moving the clips but that's around. a 22. Oh wait, I think that's what it's doing. Okay. Okay, you good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, 147 HST, uh, CZP09. Hey, box 
box moved. Downrange. I didn't go quite so low, I'm glad, because I forgot to go basically after every distance. Is that crazy or is that crazy? Well, yeah, it was just shot. <laughs> <laughs> you rock, dude. Thank you. So how's the, how's the expansion? Is there any difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they when we're analyzing stuff, we try to do it on the side so because the camera's still looking at it, so you guys can just hanging out a little bit. Steve is over. Looks like this one. Fair. Fair. I I don't really know what which it is. Probably a little close. Well, this was. You might turn into that if I keep talking. Can you tell the difference between the two? But I appreciate that we're not there. We have to look at it from another face. Oh, so it did. Check out. Depends on how many hours I'm awake. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a, and that, so, so that would make sense. The higher velocity is going to push the bullet to open up more. Yeah, yeah. all the points. Yeah. 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 If we had a longer block, I would suspect that the bullet in the wide barrel gun would have penetrated less, probably not substantially. And obviously, like, plenty sufficient, but it would probably be just a tap. See, that's interesting. The <laughs>